Top of the morning, Sunday sessions, episode 25. Here to just get some Amazon updates. Amazon made a lot of changes in the past couple of weeks. Small and light, new 5%. FBA pick and pack fee increase, which is cool. Just want to make sure everybody's on the same page. So I'm going to break that down as well as answer a ton of questions. See you inside. Stay lit. We got going on today what's everybody doing right now let me know what you're doing in the comments you know it's it's interesting the uh, the community we've created i i had a phone call with a gentleman this morning and another one about 20 minutes ago and like they're both grinding it out and sometimes i question like it's saturday you know i've worked a lot of saturdays in my life like should i be working on a saturday and for me at the stage of life i'm in it's absolutely i should be working a saturday i have no kids not married Right, I, I have a girlfriend, she's supportive of my adventures. So it's like, why not, you know? So I choose to be here on Saturday, helping people like you grow your business and building my own businesses as well. So what's everybody got going on? Let me see here, working, okay. Shout out to the workers there, work, work. All right, so a lot of you are doing the same thing, that's cool. Not that it matters what you're doing or what I'm doing. Just like to get a consensus, you know, feel the vibe. Updates, first some updates. There has been a change in small night, which is definitely valuable to third party sellers. It's increased from $8 to $10. This is huge. This means that the SKUs that are eligible to enter into the small night program have just increased dramatically, which is very positive for third party sellers like ourselves. The only change that didn't happen was there is no effects to the dimensional or actual weight of the product. So the weight restrictions and size restrictions are still the same for small and light. It's just increased from $8 to $10, which is huge. Definitely huge. The second thing I'd like to cover before we get into some of these live questions here is the 5% increase on pick and pack fees. We've gotten a lot of messages about it. There's nothing to be concerned about, you know? So I know just from basic metrics, FBA fees make about 29 to 30% of our sales value. So you figure a $21 product, which is our average selling price for product, you know, the pick and pack fees about seven bucks. So a 5% increase on $7 is about 30 cents. Right, so yes, initially you will be making 30 cents less on the items because the changes in price will not reflect yet because not everybody's up on changing their prices to reflect the current 5% FBA pick and pack fee increase, but that's okay because in three to six weeks, that will all level out. And 99.999, 100% of that FBA pick and pack fee will be passed on to the end consumer. So there's absolutely nothing to worry about. It will not be coming out of your pocket it will initially for the first couple of weeks and then it will be passed on to the consumer it's the same thing that happens when there's an increase every february in the pick and pack fees initially we eat it and then three to six weeks later once all the price fluctuation changes and the prices go up then it's passed on to the end consumer. so i'd love to answer some questions while you got me here for the next couple minutes and be of maximum value to all of you because that's really always the goal here so a gentleman asked uh, he's using the seller central app to scan products doing retail arbitrage specifically books is there better software out there absolutely there's better software go to the book flipper his instagram he created an, an amazing software i can't think of the name off the top of my head but he's like at the book flipper or just search book flipper and search bar and, and Instagram and he'll have a link. I think it's Scoutify maybe. Um, I could be mistaken there, but absolutely. You set your prerequisites in there, you know, minimum rank, maximum rank, and then boom, you just scan, 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 scan. It beeps. If, it, if you're accepting it, you toss it into one pile. If you're not, it toss it into the other. It's very efficient. This is a great question. How to send LTL shipments to Amazon? This person who asked the question is experiencing issues sending smaller shipments because they keep getting split. So over the years, we found a few metrics that qualify you for less splits in your shipment. The first one being 18 units or more, and the second one being large inventory volume. So like the more you're sending, the slimmer chances you get of getting it split. Now, shipment splits initially are very common. So there's a few ways to navigate these. One thing I like to do is if I get a shipment split, for example, we get a lot of splits for our oversized and hazmat products. So if I get a shipment split this morning, that's going to four warehouses and I run the numbers, it's just too expensive, too lucrative to do it, right? Then I will resubmit that shipment a couple hours later. And a couple hours later, I may get three FBA fulfillment centers 
centers to ship to. And then I might do it a couple hours later and I might only get two. And at that point of getting two, I might be like, you know what, two's convenient, I'm gonna lock it in, it's much better than four. Chances of getting one are very slim. So first thing you need to do, play around with the shipments, the time you're requesting them, the time you're submitting them, and submit them at different times of the day because a lot of times they will allocate your shipping location differently. The second thing is you could turn on inventory placement. Now, keep in mind with inventory placement, there is a service fee, so this is not the prime method that I would recommend using. The third is to start sending larger shipments, right? So preferably anything over five pallets, that's really the sweet spot to eliminate those split shipments. Is it guaranteed that it will eliminate those split shipments? Absolutely not, but that's the sweet spot. We haven't gotten split shipments in probably, I don't know, on our regular items, six years maybe, but on our hazmat and our oversized items, absolutely are we getting split shipments. Said, bro, when you come to the UK, so we got some UK adventures planned in the near future, so keep an eye out for that. All right, here's a question. I paid $38 for shipping to Amazon, and they also charged me for taking the items and putting it to my storage unit in the FC, like $12 for 93 units. I have no idea what you're talking about, brother. You gotta rephrase your question. So you paid $38 for shipping. Okay, makes sense. And then they also charge you for taking the items and putting it to my storage unit in the fulfillment center, like $12 for 93 units. So there is a storage fee. There is a storage fee per item. You can see that storage fee. The storage fee is a calculation of, of 30 days of inventory, right? So let's say the storage fee is 30 cents, right? Essentially, you'd be paying a penny a day to store that item in Amazon. So those storage fees are across the board. The beautiful thing is they're for all the sellers, so they're not unique to you. And also, most of the profit calculators that you'd be using on an Amazon listing account for those storage fees. And the storage fees are rather small, but as you grow, it's mindful to keep track of those numbers because in Q4, our storage fees are about $80,000, you know, which is about 4X of our normal storage fee, which is twenty dollars to $25,000 a month, you know, but that gives us the opportunity for Amazon to store our goods and ship them to customers, so I'm comfortable paying that. So how many suppliers do we work with? This is a good question. I mean, it's really dependent on your business, right? So I think that a healthy business Amazon wholesale business model, you're gonna have three to four, or two to four really, core distributors, right? And when I talk about core distributors, I'm talking about distributors and wholesalers you're placing consistent weekly orders with. Now, initially it might be bi-weekly orders or tri-weekly orders, but the goal is to have two to four suppliers that you get sourced inventory from every single week. So you have a shipment coming from them every single week. Then you're gonna have your secondary suppliers, right? These secondary suppliers are suppliers that probably have a little less of a, a large catalog, smaller catalog, you know, varied pricing, and they get one-off products that maybe weren't in the catalog last week. Now we deal with about five to 10 of these secondary suppliers. And with these secondary suppliers, we are placing orders bi-weekly, tri-weekly, once a month with them. The Pareto principle, 80-20 rule, right? 20% of your suppliers are going to bring 80% of your sales. You know, so it's so simple when you think about it like that because you need to have the stable suppliers that you're getting the weekly products from and then you supplement in between with those secondary suppliers. And then you might even have a third category supplier where you only place an order every quarter or maybe they only have killer spring deals or they got killer Q4 deals. So like you're just leveraging that relationship when you need it, you know, but the base needs to have that two to four. If you don't have that two to four, you need to find them. The Aaron asked if inventory placement is worth it. And I think you always got to run the numbers, right? Because it might be worth it for your business, but somebody else, it might not be worth it for theirs because that 30 cents could be the difference between a profit and not a profit. I know a lot of businesses that operate on lower margins, but they sell high volume. So for example, for their companies, inventory placement might not be worth it. But for yours, if you run the numbers and it makes sense and you include that 30 cents in your calculation and it streamlines the shipment process, because that's the goal. Saving time is always the goal. And a lot of business owners fail to do that. They do things the way they used to do them because they understand it and it's built into their minds, but they don't realize how much time they're wasting. So if you could turn on inventory placement and you could get your shipment out of the door twice as fast, you gotta consider the time that's saved on the back end of that shipment opposed to the cost, right? It's not always about what you're spending to get something. It's about the value that that something provides to you. And in this case, inventory placement 
could be the difference between streamlining your processes more efficiently and not. Greetings, I was suspended due to related account. The guy we used to work together at the same job was suspended and AMZ did it to me too. AMZ doesn't accept proofs. Any advice? Yeah, so we actually offer a suspension service. Um, you know, I'm not gonna break down what it would take to do that in this live, but if you wanna smash our link in our bio, we'll be happy to help you, my friend. You know, we've gotten over 300 accounts reinstated, a lot of them for your issue. Uh, the biggest issue we have problems getting accounts reinstated for is multiple drop shipping account health issues. Those are nearly impossible to get back, so I would advise against that. But yeah, absolutely, man, we can help you out. I sent a shipment 13 days ago and it still says delivered and out of stock so what am what happens when you send your inventory to Amazon is you most likely are sending it to a DC which is a distribution center and then they're spider webbing those products out to fulfillment centers FC's all across the country if you go into your shipment details and um, seller central and your shipment manage FBA shipments you could actually see where those items are being shipped what fulfillment centers they're being shipped to so most likely any day now if it's already been 13 days your inventory is going to start being being available for sale. Sometimes it takes a little while. Some things that we like to implement to solve those problems, 2D barcodes are truly revolutionary. Also sending out when you're smaller, more frequent shipments will alleviate that as well. Because let's say you're sending out a shipment every Friday and then you switch it to sending out, you know, a third on Monday, a third on Wednesday, a third on Friday. Now you're increasing the opportunity for those items to be received a little quicker instead of waiting till Friday to send that shipment out every week. So initially, this is definitely something you're going to experience Experience, but don't let it defeat you. Don't let it bring you down. Just keep sending in inventory. Those units will be received and they will start selling soon. So this is a question about additional fees when shipping LTL. The person who asked this question asked that they're getting additional fees charged to their LTL shipments by the carrier for wait time at Seller Central. Perfectly normal to do that. What I like to do to alleviate that additional service fee, which still comes into play sometimes, is have my own carrier. Now you might not be in a position to have your own carrier, so you just gotta eat the fees. So even our own carrier though, we have a clause with him, if he spends you know more than an hour waiting, we pay him whatever it is, $40 an hour to wait for that additional hour. And I think it's perfectly reasonable, like these people are transporting and carrying your products. So if they have a service fee for their time, and their time is valuable, then you just gotta pay the service fee. It's a cost of doing business. How do you guys automate logging LTL box content and unit count? Do you guys use the upload or in-house software? So we use a software called Wizard Industries, which is integrated to our own in-house software. Wizard Industries is a box content label printing software. There's also a couple other ones out there. So if you just Google, you know, 2D box content, but what we do is box content labels and we're not uploading all that information. We're literally putting it in there. It's going into the box content information it streamlines the processes very efficiently and it's it's very detailed process initially to understand we do break it down in thorough detail inside of our training e-sellers ri multiple videos showing you how to do that leverage it get it set up correctly so you're no longer wasting massive amounts of time inputting box content information because it's a nightmare to do that uh can you tell me where to find products yeah so right here on my youtube channel there's a video just type in amazon lit sourcing profitable distributors i'll even put it right up here that's one of the eight different methods we use. We also use Google search. Google search is huge, especially if you're just getting your feet wet and getting in the door, um, using keywords and areas. So let's say you live in Chicago, grocery distributors, Chicago, health and personal care distributors, Illinois, right? Toy distributors, toy wholesalers, Illinois. And then you start branching out from there. The reason why you wanna start in your immediate area is because just the cost of shipping and the leveraging the relationship. It's much easier if you find a supplier 20 minutes from your house where you could actually go knock on their door, meet with them in person, shake their hand, build a relationship, no cost of shipping because it's right down the road, opposed to if you live in Chicago, open an account with a wholesaler in Miami where they might charge you, you know, $600 to get three pallets shipped to you. Now that does not mean that that Miami relationship is not profitable and shouldn't be harvested and built as well, 
but you wanna capitalize on what's next to you first. So what happens if I get an IP complaint? Will they suspend my account? So it depends on how seasoned your account is. You know, so the way they treat account health is ratios. So based on your volume, they look at how, how bad your account health is or how good your account health is. And then they look at how long you've been selling, you know, what type of orders you're generating monthly. And then based on that information, they make a decision. So I cannot confirm whether your account will get suspended or will not get suspended with one IP complaint. But what I can tell you is that you need to be proactive. Immediately, you need to look at the case log, see what they're requesting, submit your plan of action, and you wanna make sure it's accurate as well, right? Because a lot of times what I see is when people submit their plan of action, it's like they forget their business and they all of a sudden put all their emotion in their POA. And they're like, yeah, this is really affecting my, you know, my business and like, I didn't mean to do this and I'm so, and it's like, no, 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 no. You're treating it like a human being. Treat it like you're a business owner, you know, and talk about what you're going to do to fix it, what you did to make the mistake and how you're going to solve it, what what systems and protocols and SOPs you implemented so it doesn't happen again, how you're training your team to recognize these problems so you are no longer continuing to repeat this process. So that's what Amazon's looking for, an admission of guilt as well as a thorough plan of action of what you implemented to prevent it from happening in the future. So if you do have an IP complaint, just be proactive about it and you're ready to rock. So listen, my friends, this has been fun. I'm gonna break out of here. I got some tasks I gotta take care of for the rest of the day, gotta run upstairs. But I appreciate all of you. You know, I'm gonna be jumping on this live a little more here. It's took a, about a month and a half off. His life got crazy busy. He was doing a ton of traveling, but you know, I'm gonna make it a priority to be here because I love spending time with y'all. love helping you grow your businesses. Um, definitely, if you got any questions, we'd be happy to help. Have a beautiful weekend and stay lit, my friends.